Hi, I'm Austin Nicholas, the founder and CEO of Get Focused, a meeting software and training company that empowers you to conduct highly effective and engaging remote meetings. So the last workshop we talked about uh, having a focused mindset. Now we're going to talk about um, having focused habits. So the Q is uh, training on focused habits. The routine is habits that build trust in teams. And the reward is that you start or you begin to develop a magnetic culture. Uh, a magnetic culture that enhances meeting performance and productivity and rewards your team by demonstrating that you appreciate their most important asset, which is their time, and you value that time. Now, trust is a habit. It takes time, it takes work, and it takes consistency. And to maintain a habit, you need to make it obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying. Now, as we said, again, you have with the habit loop, you have Q, routine, reward. And the Q for the Get Focused 7 habits is our, these three habits. And by adopting these three Q habits, let's say, it um, makes the meeting process, it makes it simple to know that you're uh, in a meeting and therefore trigger each of the seven focused habits when you need to shift the focus of the meeting. And the habits to practice at the Q stage of all Get Focused meets are to be free from distractions, to be open to engage and to commit to the routine. And by committing to these three simple habits at the very start of every meeting, will have a dramatic impact on the effectiveness of the meeting. It will help really enforce the mindset that we um, talked about in our last workshop. And I'd like to take this opportunity just to unpack these three habits a little bit more. Now, habit one, free from distractions. For highly focused meetings, it is adamant, it's so important to be free from distractions. No matter how proficient you are and your team at becoming or hosting, sorry, effective and efficient meetings. If people are distracted, your meetings will not be a productive use of time. Uh, research carried out by the London Institute of Psychiatry found that persistent interruptions and distractions saw a 10 point fall in their IQ. Now that's twice that found in the studies of kind of smoking marijuana. Um, so I think next time when you see someone sort of on their phone, um, getting distracted, and or on their laptop. I'm going to turn my phone off now. Um, yeah, on their laptop, multitasking. Kind of, there's a phrase: multitasking is half arsing. Um, you might as well be sitting there um, with everyone smoking um, marijuana because that's the sort of impact it has on um, their their capability to really um, um, provide value during that meeting. Now, an interesting tactic um, that both Jeff Bezos and Tim Cook use um, and are strong advocates are of are uh, silent starts. And silent starts at every meeting ensure that you have that undivided attention of participants. And it helps to reinforce uh, this habit of, of being free from distractions. Now, open to engage. Now, this really is about sort of being the embodiment of the Plato value. So being people focused, listening and learning actively. And then we'd touch on, I mean, it's mainly those two values, but we'd touch on really ambitious goal setting and being transparent and optimistic. But um, really being open to engage just sort of really does hit home the people focused and listen and learn actively. And, um, and listen and learn by example, kind of what one, what you should be doing is aiming to hit this delight zone in everything you do. At Get Focused, we understand that simply satisfying is not good enough. Uh, we nickname it the Baker's Dozen strategy, where you sort of sell 12, but whenever possible, include an extra treat, um, i.e. an extra bun, to make them smile and feel that value, the unexpected surprise. And it'll really help if you can have that sort of Baker's Dozen strategy um, to your team and your team members, it will really help drive that sense of belonging, which is so important to help build trust and um, get that commitment level from those people. Because if you don't have that sense of belonging, fear kicks in. And when fear kicks in, the amygdala activates. And when the amygdala activates, you get this fight, freeze or um, flee response, which is not something you want in your people. And really kind of uh, meetings are 
a real culture value building opportunity because whether if on zoom or in person people are, are, are wanting human to human interaction with social beings and certainly when people are feeling more isolated um it's what people are craving and um i think also sort of which we touch on later is understanding the heart and health goals um of all your um in all your team members really helps drive that empathy and it's the psychological safety in your team comes from having high levels of empathy and engagement so clarifying those uh, and being open to those really will help um drive home those plato values we discussed in our last um our last workshop habit three commit to routine um meetings are getting longer but the problem is, is our attention spans are getting shorter so something's got to give and leading shorter meetings is an important skill um we recommend meetings of 45 minutes work best kind of what this does it allows time for recovery uh, to grab that sort of cup of coffee or follow up from the meeting or, or or that much needed freshen up or toilet break or simply just to get a bit of exercise. Um, because typically, yes, people are working an hour quadrant. So therefore, you have that 15 minutes buffer time. And um, if you want to make sure everyone can be in, let's say, your weekly meeting, don't opt for um, Monday morning, nine o'clock, because people aren't necessarily willing and being open are oh, they won't be willing to be free from distractions and open to engage at that time um because more often than not they'll be sort of dealing with emails that have come on over the weekend and playing catch up um the best time to meet for a weekly meeting is tuesday afternoon and that's come from data from over two million responses where five hundred thirty thousand meeting invitations 2 30 p.m was the best time that people are free and it sort of makes sense because yes, they've had time to clear their inbox they're feeling more settled, they're in a rhythm and they're ready to really attack the week um, and focus on what matters. So Tuesday, 2.30. OK, that's another thing. Keep hydrated. Um, now, so we talked about the queue. So free from distractions, open to engage, commit to, it, to success. Now we sort of get into the routine of the actual meeting itself. And we've come up with these, um, the four follow on habits, habits which provide the structure for the meeting um so it's essentially the routine as well so we've set this 2 30 on a tuesday now this is the routine of how you conduct your meetings and what they do is they kind of this routine it promotes a quality not quantity mindset to the time spent and it makes it easy to replicate so that people do not waste time trying to figure out where they are in the meeting progress and process sorry and you stay focused on what matters it's, it, it it helps you rein in and not get um start running down too many rabbit holes during the meeting and um, and yeah, the, the the four stages ensure that participants know where they are in the meeting and what to be focusing on. And let's unpack these more now. So habit four, uniting on objectives. So or uniting on goals. Um, be clear what type of meeting you're hosting so that you can prepare and arrive knowing what type of meeting to expect. And understanding that there are different types of meeting, each with a different purpose and rhythm. Um, will help your team spend their meetings more focused um, and, the, and it limit the number of goals on objectives for the meeting to let's say three don't try and sort of process so many topics and cover so much information in one meeting and it, we'll talk more about this in the follow-on workshop which we really focus on the meeting rhythms and what sort of rhythm to to to, to ensure you get the best results but understand that yes if you if you try and tackle everything all at once, you'll get nothing done. Um, tackle something, finish it in a sprint, and then take that next topic and think, okay, yes, we'll 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 tackle that one now. So um, we'll, we'll focus on that later. But I think it's important just to be clear that you're of, of understanding what is the purpose of the meeting. And I think once you sort of get into this sort of rhythm and 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 process it, where you've got the goals. Um, uh, you've shared your goals, you're, you're clear of your goals. Um, by sharing your head, heart and health goals with people you respect is a great way to give you the drive to hit them. Kind of you, by defining your goals, you find the accountability partners within your team. You set the specific days, times to meet with those partners or your team. And you learn from each other and communicate and support and celebrate the small wins. 
what this does is it yes it raises your kind of your your self esteem because it's you're making progress and 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 not necessarily purpose but you're making progress to your purpose and um and yeah kind of having these this this accountability buddies it makes these habits stick and and what we are still trying to really strive with this product and it just generally is to have healthy habits lead to balanced lives and um that's sort of the overriding goal for us and hopefully something that would have an impact for yourselves by using uh the get focused habits and 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 philosophy okay so focus teams we unite on the goals and um Einstein has a famous quote here. If I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on it, I would use the first 55 minutes to determine the proper question to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. So I think this is really what we're trying to get people thinking about is what are you actually holding the meeting for? What is the key question you want to get answered? What's the key challenge that you're facing that you want to um, to, 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 to resolve? By clarifying that before the meeting people can um prepare for the meeting accordingly and then the re meeting will be um well, time will be better spent during that meeting um as we talked about before kind of driving empathy and 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 getting this psychological safety in your team um i think it's a nice icebreaker to ask is kind of how are you feeling are we red amber green this will allow you to immediately gauge the temperature of the meeting invoke a feeling of empathy amongst the team and Obviously, kind of, if you're getting, if, if if the mindset isn't right, we're hoping that by adopting a better mindset, you have more people in the green and the amber zone and the red. But if there is a problem and you sense that one of your team members is is not, let's say, hitting um, their full potential, then you can uh, start addressing that. And then, yeah, what are the three goals you're wanting to address in the meeting? Try to limit it to three. If if these have not been wordsmithed in advance, then Obviously, this is the time to start stating those in the in the app. Kind of, we would recommend using the Get Focused app um, to ensure that yeah, you can, you stay focused on those key on 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 tackling that key issue, and you can record the notes and decisions and tasks that um, are related to that, and they become uh, transparent and people can take ownership, high accountability um, of those tasks. And yep, yeah, so you've defined your goals, you track your task and you celebrate the, 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 the small wins of, of achieving those goals. Um, we, we, we're great fans of sort of measuring um, progress and um, the, the, by kind of transparency is the currency of trust. So by shining a light on what's been done by whom will um, certainly help um, keep everyone on track, let's say. And obviously will help avoid the proximity bias um, when you're having fully remote teams or hybrid teams that that person working from home will will obviously be um, be be playing on the same level same field as, as those working in the office okay habit five share ideas kind of this is really kind of really trying to encourage people to embrace and encourage the diversity in teams now teams that possess people focused players typically one would hope would have sort of uh each of these quadrants covered because um yeah there'll be people who would be stronger at sort of coming up with ideas and sharing ideas and there'll be other people that would be stronger at evaluating them and then there's the sort of the 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 people who are good at delegating and so forth um but they're not set in stone these people focus types um, I like to envision them as sort of presets on a radio where you can sort of press at certain points during a meeting and therefore you can have the option to sort of collectively exhibit the strengths of each type at the relevant stage. Um, you can find out your people focus types um, and by gain and, and gain more information by information by completing our meeting scorecard um, from the website um, and that is part of our training and onboarding when you decide to to take on the product and 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 utilize this this system within your company but typically yes this is sort of the strength styles and senses so we have the uniter which is the sort of the nelson mandela sort of um type person who is a good all-rounder and he's got a very collaborative and interactive approach um you have the sort of madonna the the the, the sharer who's very creative and she's a great starter um and she's all about sort of 
um, just looking for new ways and possibilities of tackling this goal or tackling this problem. Then you've got the more sort of refined and evaluator, like the Bill Gates sort of character who's very coachable, but he also is very um, analytical in his approach. Um, data counts for a lot. Information counts for a lot. Before being able to uh, make a decision, they want to have everything um, on the table to evaluate it um, in, its, in, its, in, its, in its entirety. And then, yes, the sort of Angela Merkel's out there who's a great finisher, very controlling, and, and looks at the real situation and, and, and ensures that kind of um, things get done, basically. Um, and I think kind of for these type for these we touched on this in the last um, in team sizes that yeah four to seven players make the ideal team and and if you can cover each of those bases then that would be wonderful but if not you can adapt your style accordingly throughout the meeting and I think kind of the key question you ask at this stage of the meeting is can anyone in the team share any knowledge research or advice that would help answer the, or address this 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 question or topic and give everyone a give everyone the mic. Uh, kind of one of the great tools in in um, in get focus is we have this mic time, um, where it gives an indicator of kind of everyone has had an opportunity to input um, and and by using that tool uh, within the product uh, within the app you can uh, gauge that yes that's something that you have done during the share time or sharing period of the meeting that everyone has had a voice. Again, driving engagement and empathy brings in psychological safety trust takes time work and consistency okay evaluating on merit um, and I think this is again kind of key questions you want to ask at this stage is kind of which ideas offer the best value for the least amount of effort and and what are the um, potential knock-on impacts or interrelated decisions that will need to be addressed uh, I think these are sort of things that you need to be looking at um, when you have your long list of tasks or ideas that you would think about what you'd want to take to the next stage of the meeting, either the delegation stage. And kind of when we're evaluating on merit, we simply use this. Um, it's basically this evaluating merit, we use this impact effort matrix, which is sort of driven by the Pareto principle, the 80-20 principle. And the best idea is determined by the quality of the data, not by the positional power of the person who suggested it, and be clear with the whole team what are the criteria, the parameters and the qualities you'll be using to evaluate the ideas. And that ensures the process is transparent and people are open to challenge it, let's say. Um, and I think when it's important during the evaluation stage to agree on a course of action, but also be mindful that ideas often need a cooling off period um, before acting upon them. Because it, ideas sometimes or nearly always seem brilliant when they're hatched. Um, but it's always wise to sleep in it or at least wait 24 hours uh, before acting on it. Um, but don't sit on the decision too long because be clear on, on, on when action should be taken. And we'll touch on this more when we're looking at the rhythms and routines in our next workshop. But yeah, with this matrix, kind of you obviously want to get your ideas. You want to be taking the ideas, the great ideas, which have high impact, low effort. And if you've got an idea that's sort of high impact, high effort, kind of the key question you'd want to ask yourself there is can you reach the same impact with less effort? And if they're sort of a weaker idea where they're sort of low impact and low effort is like, okay, what can we do with this idea to make it have a greater a greater impact? And if they're low impact, high effort, and simply can them um, and, and focus on what on the other ideas really that you've come up with. And delegating what matters, kind of, yes, it's really, really crucial. This is often a part of the meeting that you don't get round to. And um, that's when you come out a bit deflated that you've had a meeting, but nothing's actual. that we've had no action points. So it's really important to record and share your decisions and the action plan with all those in the meeting. And by delegating, you, you record the what, the when and the who for each item and share those tasks accordingly. This creates a single source of information that boosts buy-in for decisions and accountability for results. Set clear deadlines for these goals and begin creating the team skills to hit it. Um, record key action points and any ideas outstanding topics to the next meeting. Identify any barriers to delivering on the action items. One key thing though, if you're creating teams to sort of tackle the idea, make sure that one person is taking ownership, i.e. becoming accountable. 
um, and it's their job to then share the progress. But they that kind of accountability is is ownership in essence. And I think that's really kind of where it comes down to the key question is, can we clearly state the decision that we've made and who has the resources and the expertise to execute it? Who has become accountable? Who has taken the ownership? And finally, kind of, we I would say anonymously rate, but will you get focused on the decisions made and was this meeting time well spent? Because there's no point um, delegating tasks where people have not committed to tackle them. Um, it's always important to... Um, yeah, I get that commitment from from your team members to to ensure that that task will be met on those certain times. Be realistic, but be stretched. Ambitious goal setting. Remember in the Plato values. Okay, so that's that's enough for this one in terms of focused habits. The seven focused habits: free from distractions, open to engage, commit to the routine, unite on goals and objectives, share ideas, evaluate and merit, delegate what matters. Um, adopting those habits and meetings will always make them more effective and, and engaging and now in the next workshop we'll talk about the focused rhythms that you need to um, adopt to really make uh, the, the, the impact of utilising Get Focused within your tribe. Alright, um, thank you very much for listening. Take care now. Bye bye.